just about everybody enjoys sending and receiving Christmas cards. But I think when it comes to soldiers, particularly in times of war, there is a particular uh, importance to that. Because of course, it's a link with home. Sending cards home to the folks, receiving cards, just basically means you, you've not been forgotten. It's a link with your friends and family. Um, and we've got quite a large collection here um, from all world, both world wars and from before. And um, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They're mostly fairly simple productions. This one is unusual. This is actually, it's um, drawn by Thomas Burke, POW, and it's actually printed in Starlag 20A. So this was um, a card produced by and four British prisoners of war in Germany. And it shows four grinning servicemen, the Santa in the foreground, and in Santa's sack there, what they'd really enjoy receiving most, which are actually Red Cross parcels. Um, the next one, that's a World War II example. This is a First World War card. And this is particularly special. This is with best wishes for Christmas 1917 from the Reverend E.C. Cross. Uh, 8th and 9th Devons, uh, BEF France. Padre Cross um, is a character with a huge significance for the Devonshire Regiment in the First World War. He was the sort of Padre who was always with the men in the thick of it. He was one of the men who, when Private Veal won his VC, he went out as part of the, the party to try and rescue uh, Eric Savile, the wounded officer. And if anybody's been to the Somme, been down to Devonshire Trench. Padre Cross is the guy who recovered the uh, 163 dead from the Devons on, uh, on the 1st of July 1916 and basically created that cemetery for them in the old trench line. So an extraordinary character and this is a Christmas card that he sent to the men of the two battalions. This is a slightly more peaceable one, and this is a, quite a pretty little pencil drawing, actually. And this really just shows uh, where we are now. It shows the keep, but it actually shows the keep as it used to be. Um, this was 1930s, and it shows a pair of German field guns outside, which are souvenirs from the First World War. They were taken away in 1939 and melted down for scrap, unfortunately. Quite a humorous example here. We've got a rather frustrated looking, um, I think it's Ludendorff, looking at a list of um, German losses, Christmas 1917. And um, 8th Division have sent him a Christmas card. I don't think he looks very pleased with the result. And this one is from a little bit farther across, uh, off. This is from Mesopotamia. And everybody thinks about the First World War as being you know, the Western Front. In fact, there were an awful lot of British troops out in Mesopotamia, in Palestine, in the Middle East. And this shows um, uh, a British soldier evidently buying his, um, his Christmas, um, looks like a, I think it's supposed to be a goose, um, from an Arab tradesman. What, 20 chips for that sparrow? Get the impression there wasn't going to be much Christmas lunch there. This final example is not a Christmas card, but it is um, a program hand produced um, on a spirit duplicator. And it's the Christmas entertainment that was actually put on by 27th Field Ambulance uh, for New Year 1917. And it's got a picture of a Piero on the front. For some reason, I really can't understand. Pierrots were terribly popular in those days. And then it's got a um, program of uh, songs, duets, quartets, and then to finish off, a sketch entitled Billeting. And this really is, this is, this is Blackadder, this is, this is extraordinary. It's um, um, seen somewhere in France, Officer Captain James, Sergeant Private Chamberlain, um, two French boys, Private uh, Clough and Private James, Suzanne, played by Captain Warburton, and the Madam, played by Private Levy. I think we can guess what sort of entertainment that was, and I bet it brought the house down. <laughs>